good morning. As you can see, it's a little bit of a soggy one today. So this is very much an inside day for us. We're driving down to Wellington from Taupo, which is about three hours away and perusing some museums. The afternoons kept open deliberately, just in case the weather changes and we've got a number of options. Lara's just picking up a coffee and then we'll be on our way. Lara, do you want to explain the drama of the last hour and a half? I'd rather not moment. Well, okay, I'll explain it then. We arrived here in Wellington, all is well, Wellington, um, but... <laughs> Gosh, you're funny. <laughs> but uh, on the way down we had news... Boyfriend the, for sale, if anyone's interested. We had news on the way down that the ferry was cancelled. Um, no, not from, cancelled. Well, likely to be cancelled. Uh, there was some sort of engineering work that needed to be done and um, the crossings were in jeopardy. So we very quickly booked a flight at an increased cost to ourselves uh, from the North Island to the South Island and kind of made alternative arrangements. But it seems that after all, the ferries are running, maybe. Well, it's getting fixed and what they have been told last is that it should be operational from 5 a.m. tomorrow. Um, should be. Should be. So we're keeping all of our fingers and toes crossed. I was going to have to cross my toes for me. Yeah. Um, I mean, Danny, if we're not going to get the ferry because you can't cross it, so they're going to be very, very angry. Like, well, honestly, it's shocking behaviour. You mean if you can't cross it for me? No, no. no. Danny, when there's a wheel, there's a way. Mm, no, where there's a wheel, there's a way. <laughs> and they're hardly ever seen by humans. Only about a dozen species have ever actually been recovered to study carefully. Uh, so when this one um, sort of accidentally ended up hurting itself through its own greed uh, there were there was a number of uh, there was a fishing boat in, in the pit south of New Zealand in the Antarctic Circle uh, yes and it had a long line down they were pulling up fish sort of this size Antarctic toothfish uh, and this squid grabbed onto a fish bit it and then as they hauled it up over a kilometre and a half it refused to let the fish go so by the time it came to the surface just from the pressure changes it was probably already um, brain damaged if not outright dead uh, and so when they did pull it up they thought wow this is an incredible discovery no one's ever seen many of these so they pulled it aboard the boat put it on ice uh, and brought it back to Te Papa. Uh, it actually sat here for a year so this is the bushwalk um, that has been created here right outside the Museum of Te Papa, which is the National Museum of New Zealand. And it's got this really awesome classical boardwalk slash concrete walk around a sort of forest area that has been created um, and that is now thriving. Um, the sounds are very nice, it doesn't feel like you're in a city. Um, um, I'm just very impressed with this museum in general. It's, it's a great museum. Yeah, it's, there it is. Well, it's all of this building really. But this is the bush walk. Right, so as it turned out, it wasn't as simple as just catching the ferry. The ferry was cancelled in the end, we found out about an hour and a half ago, and then we plunged into trying to find an alternative route, which probably everyone else who was on the ferry was trying to do as well. So I think there's a general catharsis of emotions and emotional deadening inside me right now, but we have a solution, which is to fly via Air New Zealand from Wellington to Christchurch tomorrow at around midday um, at an extortionate cost which we will hopefully get reimbursed by travel insurance that's what it's for and yeah um, we should be able to keep all of our original bookings but we have got the problem of the car because we rented it with the agreement that we drop it off in Christchurch in about two weeks time ten days. Just ten, ten days we're now assuming that we can leave it at the airport tomorrow, having not spoken to Mo. Well, we can't speak to them because it's after hours and their offices are closed, so we'll find that out tomorrow. But for the time being, we have a solution and um, we'll see whether 
um, whether it works. So stay tuned. Lara is very excited. There's Gandalf on Eagle! It's only Gandalf the Grey. That is amazing! It's quite a cool feature to have in an airport. There's another one there. There's also a Smaug um, with kind of an opening and closing eye just as you come in, which is a really cool feature. So we're at New, well, Wellington Airport, obviously, uh, because the ferry was cancelled. Got through check-in and hopefully the boarding experience will be uneventful. Unfortunately, the transfer from the long stay car park was eventful in that the shuttle was completely inaccessible. There was no ramp. So we had to, well, I just had to kind of transfer awkwardly onto the kind of bare metal and then do a, basically a floor transfer up onto the seat. Um, it was either that or be lifted. So it's risk or humiliation, you choose. So I've, le I've left some feedback for them to say, I hope you'll agree this isn't really up to the standard that anyone would expect. Anyway, hopefully things will get better from here forwards. We're about one hour into the drive and what we've decided is that New Zealand looks very much like the Highlands of Scotland. So we've kind of come all this way for nothing, really. That's not true. <laughs> it is quite funny. Yeah. <laughs> well, not all of it looks like this. Just here. Also, some guy just did the wanker sign to me <laughs> for no apparent reason. And I'm just left feeling shocked. I like. Oh. Uh, I have no idea what I've done. No idea what I did. But maybe he's just a bell end. Or maybe I'm just a bell end. Anyway. Maybe we're all just bell ends. Landing along. <laughs> oh, it's really lovely that even here in the middle of nowhere they have accessible parking that's just. Oh. Oh, wait. So we have arrived in the middle of nowhere. Not really sure what's going on. Kaikoura is absolutely beautiful though, that's what we do know. Hoping someone comes out and tells us where to go because we're kind of just blocking the way here. And again, I'm quite good at that, being a wheelchair user, just being in people's way. Very good at that. Welcome to my yurt. Yep, this is the yurt. Which is on the outskirts of Kaikoura. Uh, this is our breakfast, I'm gonna eat all of those corn flakes, but I'm gonna eat some now. Got some eggs from the local hens. I'm not going to touch no. those. Uh, That'd be a little place, eh? I couldn't go to pay because there were chickens in my way and I am scared of birds. And that is an actual thing that has happened to me. Cool. Anyway, this is a bathroom. Right, so we're at the, what's this place called? The Cray Pot. The Cray Pot. Lara hasn't even taken off her coat because she's so excited. No, I'm actually quite cool. To eat the food. So it turns out that place was absolutely amazing and does the best seafood that we've had in a while. We're now at the beach in Kaikoura and the rain is threatening to come this way, but for now we're dry. But very beautiful scenes. Again, quite reminiscent of some parts of the Highlands. Reminds me a little bit of Glencoe, that kind of area. Obviously you don't get this color of water in Glencoe. And slightly fewer people, slightly more deer. It turns out that even the front wheel has a limit, which is very loose gravel. 
which is quite deep, but immediately got stuck and couldn't go any further, so had to be retrieved by the Coast Guard. Coast Guard, AA, and everything. So I'm still just struggling to get my head around just how far east we are. Um, I thought that is the Pacific Ocean stretching out in front of us all the way until Chile or South America, I suppose. Never been this far east in my life. We're now into the well east, but it's beautiful. 